We're going to have some more music with Dick Hurlis, but first, I want to talk a little bit. Dick, good morning. Welcome. Yes, thank you for joining morning. us. This is very nice here. Very, well, very comfortable. I well, love your voice. Well, thank you. I kind of wondered about this Monday morning, you know. <laughs> <laughs> is, is it a little early in the week, huh? morning? Well, I have to see through a couple songs, see if everything's working, you know. But what's, what, what's these buttons, these Captain Hook buttons? Oh, the, you're this passing is, uh, out? Well, no, this is a fan club has all kinds of Oh, the of fan things, club has And huh? I left them for the people there, the records and things that I hope you can get later. Okay. Well, how did you lose your eye? I didn't lose it. I was born with a bad eye. Oh, it? And uh, through, uh, I was working with Merle Haggard and some of the people down about 10, year, ten years ago this year. Uh -huh. And I was boozing and pilling. I kind of, the bad eye was born bad to begin with, but it became extremely sensitive to light after oh. I went through a little shock and had food poisoning and stuff like that. But My goodness. I've smartened up a lot since then. <laughs> but you know, do women tell you this? Because I have a, a personal fetish for men who, who are either bald or, or have large noses or have patches. You and Moshe Dayan. Yeah, I've had it all. I've uh, I've listened to all of that, uh, the Hathaway man and so on and so forth. It's uh, it turned into something that uh, is identifiable, mm -hmm. but it wasn't meant to be. It was uh, for medical purposes, really. It doesn't bother me. I forget it's there. But what kind of letters do women write to you? Do they say anything? Oh, I don't get all that kind of fan uh, mail, dear, really. Well, okay. Now, Bangor, you're listening <laughs> to that. If you want to see Dick Curlis more on The Good Day Show, just send us a postcard or two. Well, that now you'll get some mail. That I'll go along with because it's nice here. It really is. But, well, Dick, your, your boy is uh, playing with you a lot. He's not here today. I'm sorry about that. But he, he's playing in the band, too. He? Yes, he is. He's uh, Well, why he isn't here is because he's breaking in his new unit that he's going on the road with. We work together. Uh, I can't work as much as I used to. Um, I had major surgery done here a couple of years ago and through my hard living years. Uh, it's hard to, to learn. I'm glad I can uh, say that now. I'm glad I can sit here and say that to you. That, uh, I was an alcoholic. I still am. I haven't drank for seven years, going on seven years. Congratulations. And I uh, turned myself back to God a year ago, last August. And it's working. You know, it's really nice. Well, Dick, with that in, in mind and knowing, music business is a tough business, and yes, a is. lot of fellows have to fight uh, the bottle and one thing or another, mm -hmm. and they get hooked on on pills to, to pep them up to keep going. They got to make a, it's they got to drive right, 150 yeah. miles a night or wherever it is. Mm -hmm. But now you know these things, uh, and yet your your son is going right into it. Is that yeah? But because I'm the testimony, you see. He sees. He knows. Huh? He'd better. <laughs> it would be a bad idea. Keep an eye on him too. <laughs> Yeah, good one. Yeah. Yeah. How old is he? He's 24. When did you When did you start having problems, Dick, with with drugs well, and alcohol? Drugs, oh, it kind of snuck up on me. I thought I was a pretty good man, and uh, because of my size and because of where I work and how I work from Montana to whatever, you're tested, you know, in some of these places. So I I always kept myself pretty well, you know, to uh, be capable, if you had to be. Mm -hmm. But it kind of snuck up on me. It's like a crutch. You uh, you couldn't eat properly. You couldn't sleep properly. And, you, and I remember uh, working on the West Coast there in Hollywood and things. That the, I swore the agency was just rolling the globe and throwing darts, and that's where I was going, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And the schedule was pretty bad. But you got to reach a point in life where you say no and, and, and uh, learn self-discipline, you know. And I've learned that finally. You said religion and God helped you. Oh, you what bet. was your religious upbringing like as a youngster? I was raised very nicely, but uh, in a Catholic, uh, I was an altar boy for three years and uh, really going to be a priest. And mm -hmm. I went to parochial school here in Massachusetts. I moved down from Maine in 1940 when I was about eight years old. And my dad came down. He's a construction man. Taught me uh, guitar and singing. And, uh, and then uh, as I grew up, as we all do, and the anatomy changes, you go out into the world That's and you right. say, I'm going to do my thing, you know. Mm -hmm. So, But anyway, all through that upbringing, the seed was planted there. And uh, it, fortunately, I can say that being sitting here now and reminiscing back, that was a big, big thing. I'm. What took you back? To well, religion? your upbringing, your, your, I never get into the Bible that much in the Catholic religion where I, where mm -hmm. I was uh, brought up. Not really. It was all, as an altar boy, you, you learn your Latin, you have your missile, and so on and so forth. But I got into the Bible, and I really opened the thing up. And I like the paraphrased version to compare with the Bible today. That's mm -hmm. so important for the layman like myself to learn the Bible this way. And uh, you 
you can do the best you can with what knowledge you have. He's yeah. one of us, so you learn as you go. You have a farm up in Maine, I understand. Yes, I What do. kind of farm? Not potato farm, is it? No, no, but uh, it could have very well been. Is it near Bangor? Is it a rock farm? It's uh, <laughs> <laughs> now you're going to hate me. No, you got to. I got get some good land there. I know that. Yes, I have. I got a very choice. Let me tell you how that worked out. The Lord kind of directed me there too. But I was on an ego trip at the time, and I was going to buy a Rolls Royce. You know, I figured, well, I got slapped down pretty good, and I bought a farm instead. And I'm awful glad I did, uh, because the surgery came later. And uh, the five years that I was sober, I went antiquing. I bought me a train, a big train from B and A Railroad. I had five pieces of rolling stock in my backyard and uh, we a 1949 American La France fire engine an old horse I can't part with he's 30 we got to have stop there we can we do another song for 30 year old horse something for Christmas season yes season? you betcha I'd like to okay uh, thank you pleasure. 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 pleasure thank you thank you John thank you Dick hi who can, uh, hey, Dick, who? who's that young lady you got in the band there she is an import from Hawaii and California. The name is Sandy Martin. Plays terrific. <laughs> from Hawaii. Aloha. <laughs> Welcome, Sandy. Fellas. Don't you love the sound of his voice? Welcome to my world. Won't you come on in? Miracles I. Step into my heart Leave your cares behind Welcome to my world Built with you in mind Bye. 